Now there's no question that Ghost Rider is one of Marvel's most popular characters. Ever since his iconic debut in Marvel Spotlight No. 5, the spirit of vengeance has been blazing through the Marvel Universe on his tricked out chopper as the underworld's favourite anti-hero. But as you might expect from his unique backstory to his unconventional physical appearance, there are a lot of bizarre things going on with this demonic entry. And that's where I'm here to help, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 insane facts you probably didn't know about Ghost Rider. Rider. Number 10. There's a Blue Ghost Rider now, every Ghost Rider is possessed by a demon which gives the anti-hero their powers. For instance, Zarathos was the demonic entity who possessed Johnny Blaze and turned him into the fire-resistant biker that we all know and love. But there is another rider who ends up being possessed by something other than a demon and rocks a different colour scheme than the others. Danny Ketch is the third person to don the identity of the Spirit of Vengeance. He made his big debut in Ghost Rider Volume 3, Number 1, in May of 1990. Here, Daniel touched the mystical sigil on a bike that he found in a junkyard, turning him into the rider, and was possessed by the demon known as Noble Kale. But this wasn't always the case. Danny played the villain once he was possessed by the Angel of Vengeance, Zadkiel, who wanted to become God. This angel figured that manipulating the spirit of vengeance would be the best way to accomplish that, and with a new team came new colours. Ketch began rocking the blue flame look, which by scientific standards is much, much hotter. So the thing to remember here is that demon-possessed ghost riders are orange and the angel-possessed ones are blue. Number 9. The original Ghost Rider was just a cowboy. Now, Ghost Rider wasn't always a demon hellbent on vengeance. When the superhero identity debuted in 1967 in Ghost Rider No. 1, he was not the leather-wearing, chain-wielding, fiery, bonehead individual that fans are used to, because this version was a cowboy. A young man named Carter Slade happens to come upon a group of Native Americans attacking some innocent people. It turns out that they weren't actually Native Americans, but evildoers in disguise. And when Slade tried to stop them, he was shot several times. He survived thanks to some actual Native Americans who found him close to death. They brought him to their tribe and their doctor took a look at him. The tribe doctor's medical assessment diagnosed him in need of a resurrection. Upon his return to the land of the living, he was told that he was the champion of the Great Spirit. Carter embraced the role and became the Ghost Rider. However, his great spiritual championship run didn't last forever. When Johnny Blaze's version of the Ghost Rider blazed onto the scenes in the comics, Slade changed his moniker from the Ghost Rider to that of the Phantom Rider, and he still maintains a relatively small presence in the ever-expanding Marvel Universe. Number 8. He once outran Thor's hammer now, there's no question that the Ghost Rider's badass chopper has done some pretty remarkable things during the Spirit of Vengeance run in the comics, having even been able to outrun some pretty powerful things in the past, with one of these being Thor's hammer. This epic accomplishment went down in Avengers number 241. As a member of the X-Men known as Angel was squaring off against the demonic anti-hero Johnny Blaze, we saw Ghost Rider, who isn't really known for his restraint, end up putting the mutant into a coma. The Avengers tried to stop Blaze from hurting anyone else, but soon realised that they are no match for the rider. Realising that they've underestimated the fire-resistant biker, Thor tries to weaken Blaze by throwing Mjolnir at him. In response, Johnny jumps on his bike and outruns this mythical weapon. To add insult to injury, he grabs the powerful hammer and rides it back towards the God of Thunder, using the momentum to deliver a devastating blow. It's really not a surprise that Blaze is considered one of the greatest riders in the Marvel Universe, and his legendary hammer grab is a true testament to that very statement. Number 7. His car trunk is actually a a portal. Now, each rider has their own taste in transportation. Johnny Blaze and Danny Ketch were all about the bike, and Carter Slade was a fan of the horseback. Robbie Reyes, however, is different to the other versions of the character, more specifically in how he chooses to get around. Because you see, Robbie chose to roam around in a badass 1969 Dodge Charger. This Spirit of Vengeance's prime mode of transportation was aptly named the Hell Charger, and his sweet ride had quite a few bells and whistles to help Robbie get the job done. But the most surprising and memorable feature on this otherworldly four-wheeled beast is the trunk. In the issue Ghost Rider Volume 1, Robbie's little brother Gabe is rescued from a conflict involving a gang. The demonic anti-hero puts him in the trunk in what readers assumed was for safety, but in actuality was something far, far cooler. You see, the trunk is actually a portal. Gabe instantly was safely transported from the gang battle all the way to Robbie's workplace. And this is a great way to get something somewhere in a hurry during a crisis, but it also serves as a solid argument for the Hell Charger over the chopper. Number 6. The entire 
entire backstory of the original Ghost Rider. Nobody has better backstories than comic book characters. They range from unbelievably epic to, well, unbelievably ridiculous. And somewhere in the middle lies the twisted nature of the Ghost Rider mythology. To put it plainly, the story behind the Spirit of Vengeance is all kinds of out there. The demonic anti-hero has been around for basically thousands of years, and one of its most notable and prominently early hosts is none other than Noble Kane. And Kane's whole story is very weird and incredibly intriguing. During the 18th century, his family was entrusted with the powers of the Spirit of Vengeance, and Noble had fallen head over heels in love for a woman. They had a happy life together and even had a baby, but his family's happiness would soon fade, because one day his wife discovered a dark secret about his father, Pastor Kale. She learned that he was a worshipper of Mephisto. This discovery led to the pastor having his son's wife burned alive for the crime of being a witch. However, before passing away, his wife summoned spirits to kill Pastor Kale. In order to survive this, Pastor had desperately sold Noble's soul to Mephisto, which resulted in Mephisto turning Noble into the Ghost Rider. Number 5. He can control his chain with his mind Now, One thing that Ghost Rider fans can all agree on is that one particular weapon has become an indispensable tool for the demonic anti-hero. The fiery chain whip has become a crucial part of the rider's makeup, as seen both with Robbie Ray's in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Johnny Blaze in the Nicolas Cage feature films. But it was actually the third rider that first rocked this notable piece of weaponry. One of the biggest differences between Blaze and Ketch was their weapon of choice. Back then, Blaze was all about using his bare hands hands to beat down the bad guys. Ketch, on the other hand, relied on a mystical chain that was linked to his mind. Through the use of his brain, Ketch could instantly change the shape of the chain into all sorts of crazy weapons. This otherworldly metal-linked whip could also stretch as long as the demonic anti-hero needed it to go. Needless to say, this was an invaluable asset in the war against Hell and all of its dark forces. Eventually, even good old Johnny Blaze came around, dropped the fisticuff routine, and gladly adopted the chain to have it forever remain as part of the Ghost Rider's arsenal. Number 4. Frank Castle Was Once Ghost Rider Over the years, there have been several different individuals to take on the Ghost Rider identity. The most noteworthy Ghost Riders would be that of Johnny Blaze, Robbie Reyes, Danny Ketch, and Alejandra Jones. But not many know one other popular Marvel character also took up the demonic anti-hero mantle, who in 2018 became the first cosmic Ghost Rider. During the Thanos Wins run, Frank Castle is killed by the infamous villain and sent to the fiery depths of Hell. There he makes a deal with Mephisto. He makes the the mercenary the cosmic ghost rider and allows them to return to the world of the living. In return for his freedom and newfound powers, he must exact revenge on the Mad Titan, and Frank can never say no to payback, so he of course obliges. Unfortunately, the Mad Titan had already wiped out everyone else in the universe. This drove the cosmic rider insane and eventually led to him becoming a servant under Thanos. But thankfully, that's all cleaned up, and he now serves as a member of the new Guardians of the Galaxy. Number 3. He was a member of the Fantastic Four those who know a lot about the demonic anti-hero know that he's not much of a team player. However, Ghost Rider has been part of a few select superhero groups since his debut, including the Fantastic Four. This all went down in Fantastic Four number 347, when a scroll named Delilah goes after Marvel's favorite foursome. She gets to their headquarters and takes them out one by one. Once she's done, she assumes the form of Sue Storm. Using Reed Richards' tech, she summons Hulk, Wolverine, Spider-Man, and the Spirit of Vengeance. When the heroes arrive, they realize that three of the members are dead, but not realizing that she is actually in disguise, they believe the fake Sue Storm and immediately set out to find the supposed killer. The heroes agree to work together to avenge their friends and become the new Fantastic Four. This eclectic group of heroes is absolutely nuts and would be something that would be great to see unfold one day on the big screen, but until then it can only be seen during the few times that they've popped up over the years, which has been nothing major since their debut. Number 2. The Rider Once Bonded With Hulk And Venom If anyone has ever wondered what would happen if the Venom symbiote, the Incredible Hulk, and the Spirit of Vengeance all bonded together, then Marvel's Circle of Four storyline has your answer. This unlikely combo came about when some of Marvel's finest were attempting to stop Blackheart from turning Earth into a new version of Hell. Alejandra Jones's Ghost Rider teamed up with Red Hulk, Venom, and X-23 to stop the devilish villain, but they underestimated Blackheart, who proved to be more than they could handle. In a desperate attempt to beat the demon and stop his ungodly plan, both the Red Hulk and Ghost Rider bonded with the Venom symbiote at the same time. This resulted in a very large and very fiery beast riding a huge demonic chopper. Now armed with the power of three of the Marvel Universe's most powerful beings, this unbelievable triple threat single-handedly defeated Blackheart. Having the symbiote bond with Alejandra's version of the Rider alone would have been an exciting thing to see unfold within the comics, but throwing the Red Hulk into the mix as well? Well, that is just the type of insanity that readers love. 
and number one, his 2099 counterpart was a cyborg. Marvel decided to shake things up in the 90s by introducing futuristic versions of its most popular characters via the 2099 universe, and of course, one of these lucky heroes was that of the Spirit of Vengeance, and they couldn't have been any more different from the original. Marvel abandoned his demonic and mystical origins completely here, because the Riders' makeover for the future would turn him into a cyborg with a robot body who looked pretty much identical to the original anti-hero. This new story revolves around a hacker named Kenshiro Cochrane. Cochrane was attempting to steal some very important information when he's attacked by a violent gang which results in his murder. After he dies, he wakes up in a digital realm known as the Ghost Worlds. A group of artificial intelligence programs convince him to return to the real world and prevent the destruction of humanity. He accepts and his mind is uploaded into the aforementioned robotic body that is the spitting image of the Ghost Rider. The end result is a futuristic cyborg version of the Spirit of Vengeance, and it's safe to say that this is probably the craziest iteration of the Ruthless Avenger that has ever been created. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 insane facts that you didn't know about the Ghost Rider. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ, but the O is a zero. Or we can swing by Instagram, where it's the same handle. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon.